Um, all right, I mentioned before the break, January 3rd, 2018. That was a day that the Lions, Bob Quinn and Martha Ford and Rod Wood and Ernie Acorsi and anyone else who sat in interviewed Mike Vrabel. Uh, Vrabel, the coach of the Tennessee Titans, who've now got on the road and won back-to-back playoff games. Gator, where would the Lions be if they hired Mike Vrabel? And would it be stunted by the fact that Bob Quinn is still the GM? Or would Vrabel have had an influence over enough of an influence over what the team was trying to do that they'd be in much better shape today. Whether they'd be a playoff team, I doubt they'd be playing for the NFC championship game because they still don't have they still don't have Derrick Henry on the roster. But would they be in a much better place had they hired Mike Vrabel? Two days after they interviewed Mike Vrabel, they they interviewed Matt Patricia. And apparently we're wowed by the guy who's got him at three twelve and one. Not as much as the guy who's got his team playing for the national champ or the uh, AFC championship game. Yeah, I I don't know. It's an impossible question to answer. Um, you know, different coaches come into different situations, and you, you work with what you got. I I mean, would you like to have Mike Frabel in hindsight, a hundred percent? And you that was your guy at the time over Patricia at the time. Um, as I recall, I didn't have a strong opinion either way. Just looking forward to change. But, I mean, hindsight's real easy to say now, given that they're, they're dragon slayers right now. They may have ended Tom Brady's run. Um, in, it, they win at New England to do so. They go out and play a game against Baltimore in Baltimore. Nobody gave them a chance to win that game. And they won it convincingly. And it, it's funny because you look at that and – the way they won the game was basically that's New England strategy. That was that was the ultimate bend but don't break. They gave up over 500 yards in offense and yielded 12 points, one touchdown. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. But they've got the horse to go with, which is Derrick Henry. They've got an offensive line that can certainly block a run block anyway. Um, and he made a, a brilliant decision. Halfway through the season, I'm done with Marcus Mariota. I don't care that he was a first round pick and you guys invested. It wasn't my guy. Forget it. I'm going with Ryan Tannehill. We we got him in the off season. We're going to use him. And they went seven and two down the stretch, and now they're they're two and zero in the playoffs with Ryan Tannehill. The last three games, they've beaten three of the four four division winners in the AFC, and they're about to play the fourth. Right. They could work their way through all the division winners and and go to the Super Bowl. Look, everybody does this, okay? You're looking for points of affirmation that that for whatever reason about some topic you were right and and you know, then you want to throw it in people's face. And I, I'm I'm frustrated by the lack the fact that they didn't hire Vrabel. Vrabel checked a lot of the boxes I would have been looking for. Uh and and so you know, he's gone out and he's taken this Tennessee team and and done it by a way that's kind of considered old school when it comes to riding a workhorse running back. As you look at the template and talk about everybody tries to copycat everything that everybody did, you know, that, that had success. <laughs> Does it make you feel like the Lions need to get Jonathan Taylor and and feed him the way that that you know Tennessee is feeding Derrick Henry. I, I I just I find it so well, frustrating because the Lions the Lions actually flirted with like Vrabel, and and here he is doing a hell of a job in the postseason. And no, they're just, they're, they're not apples to apples. You take Vrabel, and he wasn't the only thing. The, the, they they would have had to make good personnel decisions. And he wasn't in charge of that, but he definitely would have influenced it. So where would they be with Vrabel? Now, if if someone wants to call up and say, no, it won't work, it wouldn't have worked with Vrabel because the Lions are, are doomed for it not to work. It'll always go wrong in Detroit. I can't stop you from feeling that way. <laughs> like it's totally natural to feel that way. That if Belichick and Brady came here 20 years ago, it wouldn't have worked because Lions. If 
Vrabel was here, it wouldn't work because Lions. If Derrick Henry had spent the last five years, he wouldn't be rushing like this because Lions. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. It's so incredible that it, that it always doesn't work here that I can't stop people from feeling that way. It's a, it's a natural, it's a, it's a natural instinct to, to feel for Detroiters. You know, well, here's what's interesting about it. Obviously, you come in, you have your own coaching staff that you'd hire. I mean, you know, Vrabel had the pedigree with with the Patriots, so it could easily swung that way too. It tells you a different bond between Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia than Bob Quinn and Mike Vrabel. It, that's what I'm. That's, that's the conclusion right. I'm drawing. And look, they went out and they hired this defensive coordinator, Corey Unlund, and rest assured, the Lions. And, yeah, the Lions did. If, if you were worried about it, don't worry. He's got Patricia ties. Um, they go back, they both debuted at, at, uh, in New England in 2004. And, well, <laughs> you know, the thing about it is it's not unusual. Raise your hand if you work out there and you hired someone you knew and worked with in the past. It, it happens all the time in yeah. real life. And that's what Bob Quinn did. But well, the Vrabel, done it if you the hired Vrabel, Vrabel too. ties were there, man. Well, here's what's also a little bit more maddening, throwing salt into the wound there. The hire that Matt Patricia made that you didn't like, you couldn't stand this. And they finally, this has rectified itself, and now we have the news today that they've got a new defense coordinator. Paul Pasqualoni? You you didn't like Paul Pasqualoni being hired. No. Because of what you saw from Pasqualoni's past. Syracuse didn't have some kind of great defense that they were running, right? Or, or in his other stops. Mike Vrabel hires Dean Pease. Mm-hmm. Dean Pease spent 14 years in the NFL as a coach, 10 years as a defensive coordinator with the Baltimore Ravens and the New England Patriots. That was his pedigree. Yeah. That's a pretty good pedigree. Yep. Right? Yep. At, at the NFL level. Um, it's just, it's interesting that how it, it's not just, in the coaching hires the big one because the coach hires his staff. And you work on down like that. And it's, look, it, it seems like the personalities of, of Rabel and Patricia, I think, are wildly different. And yep. you, you've stated why, and, and I agree with you. It's one guy who looks like he's a head coach who delegates his authority and is there to manage the team that he's got. and Hire do the he, right guy. Yes. Yeah. Where the other guy is a defensive-minded guy, like Vrabel is too, but he's a coordinator at heart. And is going about things trying to rule with an iron fist, and it didn't seem like that's what Vrabel was trying to do in Tennessee when he got there was rule with an iron fist. I don't – I've really soured on the idea of go get the hot coordinator. you got to get the right leader of men. And it feels to me Vrabel checked a lot of those boxes. Everybody who played for him seemed to believe in him and believe in what he was selling, and he did a great job at, at telling – at, at, at and motivating different players. Everybody, you know, you got a locker room full of all kinds of different personalities. You need to be able to manage those personalities to get the best out of them. And that's what people said Vrabel was great at. And I don't know. He was right there for the taking. The Lions interviewed him on January 3rd, 2018. He was the first outside candidate to head interview for the job. Two days later, they interviewed Patricia. And I guess it just goes to show that the tie between Quinn and Patricia was was too great for Quinn to pass on. Before people text in, yes, Dean Pease was also uh, part of Nick Saban's staff at Michigan State. He worked under Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. I mean, <laughs> Dean Pease has quite the uh, resume as a defensive coordinator, and that Frabel's guy. I mean, that's that's kind of how you do it. If you're a defensive guy, you hire a defensive guy so you don't have to worry about the defense yourself, you right? Just, yeah, you just you got to hire the right people. You got to delegate. You got to let them have success. You got to identify talent. You got to get the most out of that, that talent. I mean, I read something about Vrabel and, you know, knowing your personnel and knowing how to f- have success with those personnel. Not trying to take the people and change them, but have success with the people you have. And it just find a uh, system that fits the players rather than find the players that fit the system. Yeah, it just is really frustrating. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Champ and Chump. Our nominations at ten thirty five ninety seven. Won the ticket.